Hello and welcome to my beginner's guide to Dark Souls. I have tried to keep this as spoiler free as possible so most of the footage you'll see is from the first two areas of the game. Also if you would rather not hear about certain mechanics or just want to skip straight to one in particular then you can use the timestamps in the description. With that out of the way let's get into the video. As soon as you begin a new game, you are brought to the character creation screen. Class and starting gift are the only choices that will affect gameplay, the rest being purely cosmetic. You will find that there are 10 classes to choose from. Each class will have their own stats and starting equipment, but no matter which you choose, you will be able to find all of this equipment at some point throughout the game, including the ones you already chose. For example, if you chose the knight as your starting class, you will be able to find the sets of all the other classes as well as another copy of the knight set. Also, you can wield any weapon or spell no matter what class you started as, as long as you meet their stat requirements. This means you can start the game as a knight, but end up using miracles or any other magic if you so choose. You can select to have no starting gift or choose one of the 8 options here. One of these options is the master key, which will allow you to unlock certain doors without obtaining the specific key that would normally unlock them. I chose this on my first playthrough and had a good time, but if you think you'll get lost or confused by it, or would just rather have to find all the keys, then I would recommend against choosing this one. Other than that, you can choose whichever item seems the coolest or most useful to you. Again, all of these can be obtained throughout the game. My personal favorites are the master key and the pendant. Keep in mind that these choices, your class and starting gift, will somewhat impact the difficulty curve of the game. If you want a well-rounded and well-armored character from the start, I recommend the knight. If you want your character to be able to use some type of magic from the start, then I recommend the pyromancer. And if you want to start the game with nothing, start as the deprived. Also, don't forget, you can try out a new class at any time by starting a new game. If you click B while running, your character will jump, but what if you want to roll instead? Try blocking while running, then clicking B. Your character will roll instead of jump. To perform a kick, or a jump attack, you must move the left stick forward while clicking the weak or strong attack buttons, respectively. You must be standing still to do these actions, and try your best to move the stick forward and click the button simultaneously. This timing can be a little tricky to get right, so my advice would be to practice these actions in a safe environment and then make use of them in combat. After your character jumps, they do a roll, and this can cause you to fall off ledges. To not roll after a jump, do a plunging attack. This will cause your character to land firmly. You can press B while on a ladder to slide down it. Before drinking Estus, your character takes a second to raise the flask to their face. If you want to drink more than one charge, you can keep clicking the item button, and since the flask is already raised, this will be faster than going through the full animation multiple times. If you find yourself in an enemy's grab attack, rapidly click buttons to get out of the grab sooner. This doesn't work with every grab attack, but you might as well try. Unfortunately, I cannot show you footage of this, since attacks like these are found too late in the game for me to consider them safe to show in a video calling itself spoiler free. While NPCs are speaking, you can still move your character and attack, so be careful around NPCs if you don't want to anger or kill them. I will defy the lords. You damn fool! Enough of you! The only action your character can do when a menu is open is walk. The controls for navigating menus will be displayed at the bottom of the screen here. It can be helpful to toggle between menus to see different stats while considering what armor or weapon to equip. You can do this by using the Y and X buttons as it says below.
There are seven types of attack you can do with a melee weapon. Weak, strong, plunging, jumping, rolling, backstep, and running. As well as two critical strikes that will both get their own sections later in the video. The weak attack will usually be your quickest, but do less damage per hit than some of your other options. Despite this, this can be your best attack for DPS and will probably be your main mode of dealing melee damage. The strong attack is slower, but of course deals more damage. This is best used when an enemy has enough health to survive a weak attack, but not a strong attack. Make sure to pay attention to the damage values that show up when you hit an enemy as well as their remaining health shown by the red bar that will appear next to them. It is also important to keep in mind that repeatedly attacking will not simply trigger the same animation over and over again. Instead your character will do follow up attacks. Keep an eye out for this because initial attacks and their follow ups might vary in speed and or direction. The plunging attack is very situational because you will need to find a spot above the enemy to jump down from. This is one of your deadliest attacks and should be used whenever possible, in my opinion. Make sure to be mindful of your health because you will usually take fall damage from this unless a special plunging attack animation is triggered, but this only happens for certain enemies. The jumping attack can be used more often and deals a good amount of damage, but executing it can be a little tricky at first, as covered in the previous section. I would say this is best used to close the gap when an enemy is running towards you, and you can do this on a slope such as stairs to get more distance. You can get punished for timing any attack incorrectly, but I would say this is especially true of the jumping attack, so keep that in mind. To do a rolling attack, simply click the weak attack button during the roll animation. This is probably best used if you want to immediately attack after having just dodged. You can also use this to close the gap between you and an enemy, just like the jumping attack. You can execute a backstep attack by pressing the weak attack button immediately after backstepping. This attack is similar to the rolling attack in that you would usually use it after dodging. The running attack, as its name implies, is simply done by clicking an attack button while running. This can be pretty useful for killing enemies before they have a chance to strike you, if you can deal enough damage to kill the enemy of course. Be mindful of each attack's stamina consumption because this can vary greatly. One tip I can give you is that you do not need the full amount of stamina to do the attack, but this will of course deplete your stamina bar. To illustrate this, take a look at how much stamina this attack costs. We can see that that's about 7 ticks worth of stamina, but notice that my character can still execute this attack without issue even with only about 1 tick of stamina remaining. My advice is to not recklessly attack, instead attack when you see an opening and play carefully at least until you get used to the game's combat. Locking on will not only fix the camera to the closest enemy, but also have your character face this target at all times. You will only be able to run in the forward direction while locked on and you will only be able to roll in four directions, forward, back, left, and right. You will not be able to roll diagonally. For these reasons, you might want to move the camera manually instead of locking on when facing multiple opponents so that you can keep all or most foes in view at the same time and or roll however you like. 
Alternatively, you can just switch which enemy is locked on by using the right stick. In the end, this is dependent on what you feel works better for you. I would recommend that you get comfortable fighting with the lock on and without it. Don't forget to lock on when using magic or else your attack will go in the direction of your camera instead of homing in on your target. It is possible to hit an enemy with the spell without locking on, but I do not recommend it. Also, there are certain conditions where your lock on will be cancelled, when the target gets too far away, when the target dies, or upon a successful riposte or backstab. A parry is when you swat away an enemy's attack. A riposte is the critical strike you can perform after a successful parry. Initiating a parry will cause you to go through a fixed amount of parry frames. If the enemy's weapon is in the right place during these frames, then they will be parried, and you will hear this sound cue. The frames immediately following the parry frames, where your character needs to reset their position, are called recovery frames. If you manage to parry your opponent, then you can immediately repose them by quickly using the light attack button, and the recovery frames will be irrelevant. But if you missed, then you will have to wait until the recovery animation is over before you can try again or do any other action. Not all shields will allow you to parry, and you can parry with some weapons when they are held in the left hand. With that in mind, different shield and weapon types will have a varying amount of parry frames and recovery frames. For example, the target shield has a relatively high amount of both parry frames and recovery frames, meaning it will give you a larger margin of error when it comes to timing your parry, but will make you wait longer if you happen to miss. Compare this to the tower kite shield, which will give you a smaller parry window, but allow you to recover quicker. With that said, remember we're talking about frames here, so the differences in timing are not that large. Let's compare how long it would take to do 6 consecutive parries with each shield. Don't be afraid to get close to an enemy, especially when you want to parry them. The closer the better. Watch the enemies wind up, but be careful not to parry too early. You will want to initiate the parry right before the weapon would come in contact with your character. If you parry just a little too soon then you will get a partial parry, where you will hear the sound of your shield getting hit and take a reduced amount of damage. Keep in mind that your parry does not need to visibly make contact with the weapon, as long as the enemy's weapon is in the right place during the parry frames as I mentioned earlier. As you can see here, my parry was successful even though my arm is down, while the weapon is deflected. Also, you can see that I am able to parry this hollow from the side. Keep in mind that not every attack is parryable, but some that you wouldn't expect are. So feel free to try it if you would like to find out. Generally, most attacks from humanoid enemies are parryable. The keys to executing successful parries are practice and knowing the enemy's attack pattern and tells. Feel free to practice on enemies that you think are the easiest to parry or ones that deal minimal damage before moving on to tougher opponents. It is possible to repost while two-handing, but to do this you must two-hand your weapon after the parry and then repost. Needless to say, you must be pretty quick to do this. Keep in mind that a successful parry and riposte will not only deal major damage to your opponent, but also stun them in a sense, as they will need to go through a recovery animation afterwards. Also, you will be invincible while in the riposte animation. And by the way guys, some enemies can parry you, so be careful if you see an enemy holding up their weapon. The backstab is the second type of critical strike. 
Backstabs generally deal less damage than Riposte, but are still very damaging. To properly backstab, you must get behind your target and click the light attack button. If you are in the correct position, you will see an animation that looks like this, although the animation does vary for different weapon types, just like the Riposte. It can take some practice to find the sweet spot for certain enemies, but I think it goes without saying that locking on and circle strafing is a very effective technique. Also, keep in mind that many enemies, like bosses and other non-humanoid creatures, cannot be backstabbed. Much like a parry and repost, a backstab will knock your opponent to the ground, causing them to go through a recovery animation, and you can use the time this takes to your advantage. And by the way, you are invincible when in the backstab animation. Thank you for making it this far into the video. If you have any suggestions, criticisms, or feedback, please leave them in the comment section. I would really appreciate that. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.